All right, it's that time to start putting the piston rings on. Now, the pistons aren't ready to go in yet, even once the rings are on, because I still have some work to do on the block. However, I wanted to get the rings on the pistons, get them ready. The, <coughs> oh, excuse me, the two tools I use are this, which is a broken piston ring, and the little white piece there is to indicate to me that's the machined end. The other end is where it broke, or I deliberately broke it. This is going to be used to clean out the grooves if I need to clean them out. I've, I've cleaned them once, but, you know, sometimes you don't quite get it. And once you put the rings on there, then you'll know. The other is this little piston ring expanding tool. Very nice little tool. I've had it in my toolbox for years, and I've hardly used it. I used to just pull the rings apart and put them on. Not the best way to do it. This tool does it so easily. All right, first thing to do is to get the oil ring, and that requires this, one of these, and two of these little beasties from the number three packet, which I showed you in an earlier video. Now, I'll just give me one second here, take my glasses off. This has a, two little colored pieces on it, a red and a green. Those you must always be able to see, and by that I mean once you've put everything together on this piston, you should still be able to see both red and green. If you can't see them like that, it means the ring's wrong. You've got to do it, take it apart, and do it again. So that's where they go. They butt up against each other. Take one of your rings and uh, put it on. They're a little fiddly, but these ones, fortunately, are very springy, so you don't have to worry about breaking them, unless you get really stupid. Okay, almost there. Now you see this, the ring has gone again, and I lost my little red. That's it, got to see my... And, and now it's flipped again, and I've lost my green. You do have to be very careful when you're doing this. Once it's done, it's done, and that's it. You don't have to worry about it anymore, but uh, just got to make sure you do it right in the first place. Okay, there it is. It's trying to do it again. Okay. Oops. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get hold of the end. And that, again, of course, is where this piston ring comes in handy. Let's see if you can grab it. Come on. There we go. Alright, now I've lost my red, so I need to get the ring in such a position that I can see the red and the green and then just slip this in. And that will lock in position there. And that feels a little tight. I'm going to have to look into why that feels so tight. Yeah, that ring shouldn't be like that. I'm going to try and figure this out. What the heck's going on? Sometimes you, you get a bit of crap in there that you need to get out of the way and sometimes these rings don't seat in properly so you have to kind of jiggle and piggle it until you get it in properly see I'm looking at that ring thinking that hasn't closed up properly going to my liking. All right, uh, that was just a little bit of a struggle. Now I've got the, the second ring on now as well. And what you must do is make sure they're not lined up with each other. So you see this one has the gap here. Let's just move it around to this line with the uh, Conrod and the other one is moved around to the other line of the Conrad. It doesn't matter, it's just they're easy marks for me to ensure that I've got them opposite each other. And 
as I mentioned, you can still see the red and the green, so therefore this ring is in there, it's in good position. Now the next thing to do is to put in the, uh, I believe they call this the scraper ring. Now look at these rings very carefully. You will see the word top, which means it faces up top. Logical, huh? So then, grabbing my trusty little tool here, place it in the tool. I don't know if you can hire these tools, you probably can. And the end of the ring, as you see, catches there. Then you squeeze it and making sure you've got the word top. Place it over the piston. Line it up. And release it. Now, that was that one, that's real easy. So now let's do the same with the top compression ring. Again, same thing, look at it, it says top, make sure you get it the right way. And here we go, oops, it's a little fiddly, but you get there. All right, let's turn it the other way. And this is the top ring. Again, get it over there, line it up nicely, let it go. See how easy that tool makes it. Now, when this piston goes into the block, and I'll show you when I do it, check the uh, gap, where the gaps are, where the ends of the piston rings are. Okay? You do not want them like, hang on, like this, you don't want them in line with each other because that gives an opportunity for the, the compression gases to go down and through. Small though it may be, it's possible. So what you need to do is turn them so that they're 180 degrees away from each other. All right, real simple. But of course, when you put this piston in, that's when you check that because with moving these around, picking them up, putting them down, the rings will spin. And also double check the oil ring too, make sure that that hasn't suddenly moved around and they're all together and double check the red and green okay uh that's it for the piston lesson <laughs> um next we will well, i will finish off the rest of these i'm not going to show you that because i've shown you one um then we will move on to getting the crank torqued down once that's done then we'll install the pistons and we will take it from there. All right, next thing is to, uh, yep, let's go talk the crank down. One other thing that does have to be checked, and that is on the piston, you must make sure the gap between the piston ring and the piston itself is between one and three thousandths of an inch. Now I have a three thousandths and a four thousandths, so blade here. I am having difficulty getting it in to that slot. Just about, so I think that's probably a two thou. I definitely can't get the four in there. However, unfortunately on the top, it's hard, but I can just about get the four thousandths in there. It's a little tight as I move round. So that means it's it's just over in my book. Um, I'm not going to do new pistons right now <clears throat> because the, the block was on its limit as well. And I would see the pistons are, as I mentioned previously, in a few years' time, I'm going to take the, uh, the engine out again and uh, redo the bore. And at that time, I'll replace the pistons as well. Right now, I just want to start getting this engine put together back in the car. It'll run perfectly okay of that, I'm sure. Um, I've got enough, uh, what shall I say, tightness, firmness on everything else, with the exception of that top ring, and that's not true of all the pistons, that's just this particular one. All the rest of them seem pretty much okay. So uh, that's what we'll be going together soon. Um, I know I promised the next thing would be to talk down the main, but that will be the next thing, I promise.